have broken bread with us before. Break bread this morning. Break bread with us. There's nobody like Jesus. But you know the beautiful thing is, He's here. The Savior, the risen Lord, the King of Kings is here. The Sovereign One is here. The Holy One is here. Let's remember. Let's break bread to gather with His people. Blood washed, blood bought, spirit felt. Lord, fill every one of us as we remember you. We take bread, the symbol of his body given for you and me. On the cross of Calvary. Aren't you glad he did it for you? He gave everything he had, even his final breath that you and I may be Simple act of remembrance. <coughs> Praise God.
Father, bless your word like never before. May there be miracles in this place. May you touch and may others touch you. And may they leave different because they touched Jesus. I pray this in Jesus' precious name. And everybody said, the Lord Jesus, who touched me? The Lord Jesus asked this question surrounded by a multitude of people because he knew that in the midst of the crowd somebody had touched him in faith and healing virtue had come out of him and that a miracle had taken place for somebody. Somebody. That somebody was a woman in great need. Verse 25 says, A certain woman, don't even know her name, which had an issue of blood 12 years. We don't know who she was. We don't even know her name. But here's what we do know. Number one, we know what she had. She had an issue of blood, a flow of blood, a hemorrhage, a continual bleeding for 12 years. This woman was ill. She was very ill. She was sick. Really sick. This issue of blood would affect every area of her life. If you read the laws of Leviticus chapter 15, 19, verse 27, tells us the tactical complications and personal restrictions put on her life. Such an issue would deem her unclean and thus she would be segregated from the company of worshippers, excommunicated or cut off from church, fellowship, until certified by a local priest, rabbi, or minister. People search. Let's, let's not forget. Will we ever forget COVID-19? The pandemic? The government's lockdown? Social distancing? Face masks? Vaccines? Anti-vaccination conspiracies? Swab testing? Drive-in churches? Services in the car park? Families not allowed to see their dying loved ones? in hospitals or care homes, not to mention not being allowed to sit together and comfort one another in funeral homes. I think we're still suffering the after effects of the coronavirus and of the truth be told, it's still around. 2,000 years ago, this woman was faced with similar restrictions. In fact, if married, she would have been divorced shut out from her family, separated from her community, excluded from her church, and totally isolated by everyone, everyone but Jesus. Everyone but Jesus. Number two, notice what she suffered. Verse 26 says she had suffered many things of many physicians. From one physician to another, from one consultant to another, from one diagnosis, doctor's opinion and recommendation to another. She visited them all for 12 years. 12 solid years. And 12 years later, still no cure, no healing, no recovery, no breakthrough. Sadly, every physician failed her. Every physician but Jesus, the great physician. Number three. Notice what she spent. There was no NHS in her day, so hospitals, doctors, and prescription bills had to be paid personally. Sadly, she spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. Stigmatized, marginalized, and ostracized, this very sick woman was left friendless, penniless, and helpless with no one to help her. No one but Jesus. Number four, notice what you heard. When she heard about Jesus, somebody, church, listen, somebody must have told her about Jesus. Did you say amen to that? Did you hear that, brother and sister church? Somebody must have told her about Jesus, the teacher, the preacher, the Messiah, the healer. When's the last time you told someone about Jesus? How he saved you, how he healed you, how he delivered you. When's the last time you told somebody about Jesus? 
That woman that I spoke to on the phone, she's part of my insurance company. And I, I spoke her on, she phoned on the phone, and I said, look, she says, I have them too. I sorry, I couldn't get back to you. I says, I'll be praying for you, and I'll mention your name on Sunday morning. So when you look up the people's church in Abbey, you'll hear yourself being prayed for. Hey, listen, see if she tunes in and she listens to the message, I pray the Lord will her. From a distance. Just say amen to that. Why not? Could we all say Charlotte? God bless you. And heal you. In the name of Jesus. Notice, somebody told her about Jesus that he saves, he heals and he delivers news of what Jesus had done for others made her ears pick up and hope began to rise in this woman's heart yes when she heard about Jesus something supernatural happened to her faith arose in the sick woman's heart others failed her but hopefully not Jesus. Number five, notice what she did. When she heard about Jesus, she came in the press or the crowd behind and touched his garment. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews 11 and 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for. What are you hoping for? Well, you need faith to see it in action. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith came alive in her. Has faith come alive in you? Even while you're worshipping the day. Because when faith rises, all things are possible. No matter what your situation. Faith, not only to believe, but faith to act. Faith got her up on her feet. And faith compelled her to make her way to where Jesus was. Has your faith brought you to the people's church in Abbey this morning? Because you've heard Jesus is here and what he's done. Faith moved her to go to Jesus. There's substance in faith. You can build on it. Faith moved her to come behind him. There's humility in faith. There's no arrogance in it. Faith moved her to push through the crowd. There's determination in faith. Sometimes you have to press through the crowd. Because people can hold you back from coming to Jesus. She pressed through the crowd to get to Jesus. Faith moved her to reach out her hand and to touch his garment. Faith moved her from believing to receiving. There's a big difference. You can believe all you want, but you need to receive to make it real to you. Could I hear an amen from everybody? Notice number six, what she said. She said, if I may touch what is close, I shall be made well or whole. She said to herself, listen to this. She spoke to herself. I know that's dangerous. Talking to yourself can be dangerous. In my mind, used to say, you know, people leave you talking to yourself. You ever heard that one? People leave you, you scratch your head. People leave you talking to yourself. Well, this wee woman encouraged herself when nobody else did. That's what David did. When there was nobody there to encourage him, he encouraged himself in the Lord. If there's nobody around you, encourage yourself to do the right thing. Because when you do the right thing, miracles happen. Miracles happen. She said to herself, if I can get to Jesus... If I can push through this crowd, if I can reach out my hand and touch his garment, I know I will be made whole. Everything said she couldn't. Everything said she shouldn't. But her faith said she should. And she did. And she received. Brother and sister, notice what you felt. What you felt. Straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. As soon as her hand touched Jesus' clothes, the miracle happened. Did you hear that? Listen, listen to me. As soon as her hand touched Jesus' clothes, the miracle happened. Notice also Luke says she touched the hem or the border of his garment. 
which speaks of the finished work of Christ. But it also means to me, you have to listen to this, but it also means to me that this desperately sick woman must have got down on her hands and knees and crawled through that crowd of people unashamedly in order to get close enough to touch Jesus. Close enough to stretch out. Remember there was a multitude here. A multitude. Close enough to stretch out her hand to, and to touch the bottom or the hem of his garment. Brother and sister, listen to me please. See when you're desperate, you do you like? When you've suffered so long and when you need a miracle, you don't care what it takes or who's watching or how humiliating it may look. You'll do whatever it takes to get to Jesus for your miracle. She did, and immediately she felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. I said it before and I'm saying it again this morning because I believe as I'm preaching this message, someone is touching Jesus. That someone might be you. That someone is touching Jesus. In simple faith, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, a grain of mustard, you can move mountains according to the Bible. In simple faith, my Linda, you've heard her story, stood in the healing land of the old Whitewell Church at the bottom of the Whitewell Road. She suffered from chronic bronchial asthma. When Pastor McConnell took her hands, a heat went through her body and it was as if someone blew a pea shooter through her lungs. Linda knew instantly she was healed. Two weeks later, the doctor took her off all her tablets, injections and inhalers. And she's never had an asthma attack since. Plenty of panic attacks with me, but not one asthma attack. <laughs> Folks, my Linda felt it, and the doctor confirmed it. This wee woman felt it, and Dr. Jesus confirmed it. Straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. As they say in Scotland, it's better felt than tell. Better felt than tell. She believed and she received from Jesus what she came for. Divine healing. An end to 12 years of pain, suffering, loneliness and rejection. But as soon as she received her healing, Jesus knew it too. You hear that? Jesus knew she was healed. Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue or power had gone out of him turned about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? Jesus knows when someone is in earnest. Are you in earnest today? Don't leave without Jesus. Don't leave without touching Jesus. He knows when someone is desperate, when that someone in faith pushes through everything, the crowd, the problems, the pain, and touches the hem of his garment. He knows he knows the touch, that supernatural touch of faith. Baffled, the disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? Lord, everybody's touching you. Everybody's, you're rubbing shoulders with everybody. Now listen, I love this. And he looked around about to see her. See that? It makes it so personal. He looked around the multitude to see one individual. She wasn't lost in the crowd as far as he was concerned. She was the apple of his eye. And he's looking around this congregation today and he's listening. Somebody's touching me. Somebody, I know who it is. I know who it is. He looked around to see her that had done this thing. 
Jesus knew exactly who it was who touched him and who received this healing virtue. And when he saw her, lastly, number eight, she confessed. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done on her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. In reverence and in godly fear, she told him the truth, the whole truth. No lies, no exaggerations, just the simple truth of her healing, his healing and saving power. In other words, she gave her personal testimony. See, if you're saved by grace, washed in the blood of the Lamb, and forgiven of your sins, you have a testimony. When's the last time you give it? When's the last time you shared your testimony with somebody for the first time? People need to hear what Jesus has done in your life. Folks, I've listened to testimonies, I've said it before, that have exalted the sinner instead of the Savior. Have you ever heard any of them? If you have, lift your hand. They talk more about themselves than the Lord who saved them. Not this wee woman. She told him everything about her 12 years of pain and suffering. Her 12 years of isolation, exclusion, rejection, excommunication from her church, her fellowship and her friendship. But praise the Lord, she confessed to him his healing power has changed her life. She testified I healed her. And she declared Jesus in front of the multitude as her healer. In return, the Lord Jesus commended her faith, complimented her testimony of healing. He said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague or affliction. He confirmed her place back in society, in fellowship, and in her church. The woman had an issue of blood 12 years. Brothers and sisters, as I read that out just now, the Holy Spirit led in my heart that there are brothers and sisters who are listening here today in the sanctuary and some watching online who are dealing with issues in their lives. Hers was an issue of blood. Hers was a health issue. What's your issue? What's your issue? What's hemorrhaging in your life? What's draining the life out of you? I believe this world, this world's issues are hemorrhaging. The universe and everything in it is hemorrhaging. The nations are hemorrhaging. This generation is hemorrhaging. Sadly, some churches are hemorrhaging too. I'm shocked, sickened, and surprised how many churches are hemorrhaging in wokeness. Someone tags me a photo of a school sending out letters to parents that their children are to celebrate gender swap day. Folks, if ever we needed to reach out and touch Jesus for the healing of our children, our churches, and our nation, it's in this our day, our day, the generation. Do you believe that? Say amen. There's issues all around us. There's issues all around this church. Her issue was an ongoing issue for 12 years of counting. Until. Until. Say until. Until she took her issue to Jesus. Until she pressed through the crowd to Jesus. Until she reached out in faith believing in Jesus. Until she reached out and touched Jesus. What's your issue this morning? Is yours a health issue? A drug issue? A medication issue? A drink issue? A marriage issue? An immoral issue? A relationship issue? A financial issue? A church issue? A gender issue? A grief issue? Whatever it is, whatever it is, bring it to Jesus. Bring your, reason, your issue to Jesus. And he can heal you of your affliction, your plague, your problem, and your pain. Maybe it's your, it's your heart issue, a sin issue, 
or a soul issue. You know, David cried, if I regard an ignorant in my heart, the Lord won't, won't hear me. But David prayed again and said, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way. It's your issue isolating you. Stigmatizing you or ostracizing you. Is your issue ruining you and everyone around you and slowly it's killing you? How long has your issue been hemorrhaging and bleeding the life out of you? Here's the question. Are you desperate enough to bring your sin issue to Jesus? Jesus can heal your heart, forgive your sin, and save your soul. But notice also what Jesus said to her. Daughter, daughter. Can everybody say daughter? Say daughter. There's a faction there. He called her daughter. He said, daughter, thy faith has made you whole. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Jesus called her daughter. What's that mean? This woman was a believer. This woman was a child of God, a professing Christian, yet she was sick, hemorrhaging, bleeding, dying in her Christian life because of her issue of blood. But as she reached out in faith and touched the hem of his garment, the issue of blood stopped. <coughs> Church, she brought her issue to Jesus and the angel. Her issue was important enough to bring it to Jesus. Will you bring your issue to Jesus today? Whatever it is, if it's sin in your life, if it's problems in your family, if it's health, if it's grief, problems in your work, whatever it may be, bring your issue to Jesus. Her issue, when she was healed, inspired others to come and touch Jesus with their issues. Did you know that? Really hear this? Her issue inspired others to come to Jesus with their issues. Your testimony can inspire others. Her healing gave others faith to believe Jesus for their healing. If he can do it for her, he can do it for us. Mark, let's read this. Mark chapter 6, verse 56. This was after her healing. Wherever he entered into villages, cities, or the country, they led the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they may just touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched him were made well. Hallelujah. Her example inspired others. Church, let them use you to inspire others to bring their issues. As I close, I hear the words of Jesus in the service, and in here and in here. I hear the words of Jesus. Who touched me? Who touched me today? Who touched me? Who touched me? Somebody touched me. There's somebody touching Jesus in this service. Your issue is killing you, keeping you out of heaven, out of fellowship, robbing you of divine healing, and slowly and silently bleeding the life out of your soul. But like this woman, you're reaching out in faith and touching Jesus. Who touched me? I believe those words are important in this service. Friend, have you touched Jesus yet today? Luke chapter 8, verse 46, said, Jesus said, somebody touch me. Listen to this. For I perceive power going out from me. I believe somebody today is touching Jesus just now. But the question is, how desperate are you? How serious are you? How much do you want 
to end your pain? How far are you willing to go? How determined are you to touch Jesus in faith and receive your healing, your miracle, your breakthrough? Who touched me? I believe those words are ringing out through this service. Somebody touch me. Brother, sister, if that's you, unsealed friend, if that's you, backslider, if that's you, if you're that somebody, let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. If it is, we're going to give an appeal. If you're that somebody, I want to ask you to raise your hand and pray. Not just yet. And faith, acknowledge your issue to him. And faith, press through the crowd to him. And faith, touch Jesus. Reach out and touch him. And receive your miracle today. May God bless his word to all of our hearts. Who touched me? Somebody touched me. May that somebody be you. Every individual life in 
the people's church this morning and those who will watch online later. We ask all of these things in Jesus' lovely name. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you. Amen.